Welcome to part 22 of my series. This is meant to add on to part 21 where I created four abstract textures using the brick node, but this time I'm just going to create one texture and explain my process much more in depth with all the steps along the way. So let's see how I do that. So I've already got my scene set up here. The top right is already my 3D viewport and the middle is my shader editor. In the top right when my mouse is over this window, I'm going to hold down Z and move my mouse up and just go into rendered mode there then hit shift A and I can search for a brick note here I move that in here and I'm going to control shift left click on this brick node and it'll show me the brick texture here it just shows this nodes influence on my image on the right here so before we add anything else let's quickly look at these settings uh, they're a lot easier to see with nothing else influencing this pattern here so the offset uh, just basically controls how far along that second row is and the frequency uh, we can change that so you know it's less frequent or more frequent I'm just gonna undo those the squash is kinda similar you know basically just uh, increases the width or decreases the width of uh, whichever frequency you want of that other brick there yeah just just play around with those and you'll kinda see what I mean these uh, colors here we can change the colors of the overall pattern if we wanted some red or orange bricks we could change those colors same with the mortar, we could change that one as well. And it basically just provides a range between color one and color two for all the colors of the bricks there. Kind of like a color ramp does. Then the scale, that's pretty self-explanatory. It just makes this pattern larger or smaller. The mortar size, again, kind of self-explanatory. By the way, if you find that you're adjusting these settings and it goes too quickly, you can hold down shift and then drag these and it'll do a much more fine-tuned uh, fine adjustment there. I'm going to go back to 0, 0.02 there. Mortar smooth. Let's zoom in here. So you can see it's a solid color. If I turn this down, uh, it becomes even more solid. And if I turn this up, it becomes more of a gradient there. Let's zoom out here a little bit. With the bias, we can change it so it's all one color or the other. It basically just goes to either side of these colors here. Like a, it would be kind of like crushing the color ramp. Then the brick width and row height are kind of self-explanatory you know just wider or taller so that's the basics of the brick node but I recommend you play around with it and just get more familiar with it I'm gonna highlight the brick node and hit control T and that brings up this texture coordinate and mapping node I'm gonna move this over here we're gonna place something on this line between the texture coordinate and the mapping node there so I'm gonna bring in a Voronoi and just place it right here and just make sure it's coming out of distance and not color going into that vector so we can see right here it's got all these circles and if we change the scale it changes the size of the circles but it doesn't really change how much influence this Voronoi texture has on this brick texture to do that we need to bring in another node called a mix RGB and place it right here and then connect generated into color 2 so now we can move this factor back and forth and it controls the amount of influence that this Voronoi has on this brick texture if we move it all the way to the right it's, a, it's the same image we had when we just had this brick texture here so it's as if this Voronoi has no influence and if we can see if we move it just slightly to the left there like high nines it's got a little bit, little bit of influence it's a little wavy here now and if we move it all the way to the bottom it has total influence that's usually too much so let's go to point 0.6 kinda close to the middle it has a little bit less influence than point 0.5 there so to make this texture more complex I'm gonna add a noise texture right after that mix RGB just place it on the line here and then I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this mix and place it right after that noise texture then I'm gonna run generated into color 2 of that no or that second mix there and this factor here works the same way where if we drag it to the right it has no influence and if we drag it to the left it has a lot of influence so again we wanna find somewhere in the middle and notice if I drag this to the right here all the way to 1 and this one is at 0.6 this one kind of supersedes it kind of overrules it so now we're just left with this plain brick texture as if none of these four nodes are here so we need to make sure that this factor isn't all the way to the right let's set it at 0.63 now let's come over here to the brick texture we're gonna start setting this up here so I'm gonna leave the offset at 5 I'm gonna change the frequency to 3 the squash I'm gonna go to 0.9 and the frequency for that I'm gonna go to 3 again Let's come down to the scale. I'm going to set this to 8. Uh, the mortar size, I'm going to bring up to 0.05. The mortar smooth, I'm going to set to 1. 
bias, I'm going to leave it zero. Uh, brick width, I'm going to bring up to 1.4, and brick height, I'm going to set to one. So you can see the new pattern in black and white on the top right there. So now that we've set up all these nodes here, I'm going to go back to this Voronoi. We can change this around to get some different patterns here. I'm not going to explain too much what every one of these means because I've already done a video about that, but you can check it out if you want. It's part six in my series. But I'm going to change this Euclidean value here to Manhattan. And that gives me a different kind of pattern here. It gives me these kind of square shapes. You know, it's kind of interesting. So I'm going to go with that. And uh, we're basically going to put a color ramp right after this brick texture and start setting up our colors. So let's look at this image in the top right here. It's a black and white image with uh, black in these mortar areas and then gray, light gray, almost white. And this color ramp right here is going to allow us to create a range. Basically, anything black in this original image that's feeding into this color ramp, we can then control with this bottom range here. So let's just do an example. I'm just going to change this one to like a green color. We can see now all those black, uh, what used to be black, is now green. And then it slowly goes to white, which is uh, you know the higher end of that gradient there. So I'm going to undo that step. You can actually watch a video I made about color ramps for more information. I'll just link it in the description. But we're going to set up three points here. This first one's going to be at 0.21. The second one we're going to set at 0.4. And the third one, we're going to set at 0.6, just like that. Let's set up the colors here. I'm going to choose this bottom one to be kind of a green color. Just going to zoom out a little bit here. Something like this uh, looks pretty good. The middle color we're going to set as white, and I think mine's already white, so yeah, that looks fine. This third color, we're going to set to kind of a bluish, purplish color. Maybe something like this here. That looks pretty good. Maybe adjust that a little bit there. Yeah, I like the look of that one there. Let's plug this color from the color ramp into our principal BSDF there, and then view the shader. I'm going to go ahead and bring in another color ramp, because we're now going to create a bump node. Let's plug color into factor, and I'm going to bring in a uh, bump there, and plug color into height. And then let's view what's going on with this bump node. So we can see some color information there, representing the bump there. Uh, this strength here decreases or increases that effect. I'm going to keep it fairly high at 0.7. It looks kind of cool. And then we can see this color ramp. I'm going to zoom in here so we can see the effect. If we bring the black up, it kind of erases, it kind of brings up the bottom, if you can see that. So it erases some of the details if you bring it over far enough here. And then the white, it brings the top down. So we can see it kind of, you know, thins out the lines a little bit there. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this black up to 0.25 and this white down to 0.35, just like that. So the last step here is just to plug this normal from the bump into the normal in my principal BSDF here. Let's go ahead and view this. We've got our finished texture in the top right there. So now that we've got our finished product there, we can change it around. We could adjust these scales on these textures here, the Voronoi or the Noise. We could adjust these factors on the Mix RGBs. We could adjust anything on this mapping node or on this brick texture. And we could also change these color ramps around. So I encourage you to play around with this stuff here just to see how it affects the final product here. And you might come up with something really cool in the process. Before I end the video, I'd like to do one more demonstration just of the power of these procedural textures. I change the entire middle area to my 3D viewport and view from the top. And I'm going to go into rendered mode and then tab into edit mode. And if I size this up, you can see that texture changing. I don't want that. I'm going to hit shift Z so it constrains to the Z axis and size it up. You can see my pattern just expands, which is quite cool. So you can see if I let go here, it's uh, you know basically creating just a larger version. It doesn't quite repeat but it does follow the same characteristics of my original pattern based on the nodes I set up. So if we zoom in here, it looks kind of similar, but it's never going to be exactly the same as, say, this area over here. So it's, uh, it's very interesting that way. That's why procedural textures are so much fun to play around with. So there we go. Hope you can see what I was doing and hope you can see how you could change this texture around. And if you do have any questions, you know, please feel free to ask them. I do like talking about this stuff, so I'm happy to clear up any confusion you might have. 
Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.